So I want to give you a quick rundown of how to create a function using uh, Google Sheets and also with with Microsoft Excel. All right. So here's what we're given. We're given some data, right? We get this information right here. So the very first thing we're going to have to do is actually create the graph. So let's do that. I'll usually select the data just like that and I'll go up to insert and say chart does a pretty good job of picking for me what I want to do now though is I'm really focused on getting this this function right here all right so I am gonna stretch this graph out a little bit and let's make it a little bit bigger so it's easier to see now what I'll do is I'll kind of select I'm just gonna click in this chart area on the on the line itself and then this whole menu over here pops up right so I could change a few things up I could change the axis and the titles and I can even go down and, and get you know more more grid lines if I want you know if I want to I like to I like to have all of these things checked if I can the miners and, and all that kind of stuff and here's the vertical and I can go to horizontal and I can do the same thing and all that does is it just for me it makes it a little easier to read but if I kind of scroll back up here I want to go and I really want to focus on this line. So when I click on the line, you notice that the menu kind of change over here. Under series, there's format and all this. I want to go down and say trend line. So I'll click trend line in. And then for type of trend line, I can choose, is it going to be linear, exponential, polynomial, all of the different choices. Right now, I'll just choose linear. But I could just to show you, there's exponential, here's polynomial, here's logarithmic. So I'm going to just stick with linear. Now here's the key here. Down here where it says label, right now it says none. What I want to do is change this to use equation. And when I do that, you can see it'll pop that equation in there for me. All right? So really cool. And then that gives me the function of that of how the slope was calculated. The other thing is, sometimes if I've got space, I like to add my data labels. I like to just click on that and add those. It kind of helps out, it helps you read the graph a little bit better. All right, let's take a look at Excel though. So here's Excel, here's the data already. So I'm gonna kind of do the same thing. I've selected my data, I'll go up to insert. I usually just pick recommended charts here. And I can tell that, you know what, I'll take a line graph here and I'll hit OK. I am going to stretch it out, make it just a little bit bigger so it's easier for us to see. And then I'm going to click on that, that line. And I actually right click it. And I say add trend line. Alright, so I right clicked it and say add trend line. Same options as, as Google Sheets, right? There's all the same options, exponential, linear. I'll keep it at linear. And down here at the bottom of this one, I can say display equation on chart. So Excel does it just a little bit different. Alright. And you can see I can I can kind of fiddle around with all kinds of stuff. I can even get an R squared value if I want. Those are some of the ways you would deal with creating graphs and getting functions. Another thing is here, what we're really trying to find is, is the slope. If you think about it, this is a linear, right? So we could actually just enter the formula in. So I could come up here, this is Google Sheets, and I could just start by typing an equal sign. That lets it know, hey, you're getting ready to do something. And I'll say slope. As soon as I start typing in, I get the option for it, right? Now the formula kind of pops up and says, all right, your Y data? And then your X data. Y information is right here. So then I want to put a comma. And then I'll start selecting my X data. And I'll close it off with a parenthesis there. And when I do, there's my slope. There's the 0.125. Now you can see some of these numbers here. Well, what I did is I checked it to see if it would work. So I came down here and I just, just to check it, I said equals 0.125 because that's my slope, right? times what's the first value I got on my x-axis 1.5 so I'll just say 1.5 and there it is it should be 1.875 remember there's my data value so here for 0.25 let's see what that does let's see what happens here so my I'm gonna say equals 0.125 times 
2.0 because that's the next value on my x-axis and that does check out okay so really what we're doing is we're figuring out our slope 